Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my honest review of the Mitsubishi T2, the aircraft that is causing quite a stir in the community right now because of its maximum speed and its general performance. Because, of course, this is a bit of a legend in the Wolf Thunder community right now. The Mitsubishi T2 is actually a trainer aircraft used by the Japanese Air Force based on the F1. Also, has a striking resemblance to the Sepcat Jaguar. Um, which this aircraft was actually inspired by because basically the Japanese were interested in the set in the Jag But the, everyone else kind of said yeah now nah, we don't want you to have it and the Japanese went all right fine We'll just go and build our own one and now it's in the game and Oh my gosh, can we just take a second to appreciate how beautiful this aircraft is? You know, I really probably should take those decals off for the review. I think that's a little bit inappropriate but <laughs> anyway Ah, the Mitsubishi T2, topping out a max speed at 1710 kilometers per hour. This must, this thing must be unstoppable. Why did they put this in the game? Well, I'm here to tell you why this is, in fact, not quite so over, as overpowered as everyone thinks it is. I'm not trying to deny that this is, however, a very, very, very dangerous aircraft when it is used correctly. And at times, yeah, it can put you in a situation where you cannot beat it, but I don't feel like this, but I don't feel like that's anything that a vast, that most other planes couldn't do as long as they're being played to their strengths. The difference with the Mitsubishi T2 is that strength is very big, very loud, and right in front of your eyes. 1,710 kilometers per hour. That is 200 and, well, 250 kilometers faster than the previous fastest aircraft, the F-100 Super Saber. Now, it is also undeniable that the Mitsubishi T2 will reach that speed a lot faster than the F-100 reaches its own if you put it up at 10,975 meters. Now, show of hands, guys, who's actually ever taken an aircraft in a random battle out to 10,000 10, meters to get the best performance out of their aircraft? Yeah, not quite as many of you. <laughs> and then, of course, but it's much. It's not just about that, about that speed. It's also about the turn time and the rate of climb. Yeah, the rate of climb is absolutely terrifying on this aircraft. And the turn time looks formidable as well, but let me tell you a little psych about that turn time, kids. That turn time is very real, but here's the thing. When you're traveling this fast and you need to turn this quickly, what happens to those poxy little wings? I'll tell you, they fall off very quickly. You are never going to manage this turn time at that speed. It's not going to happen. And in fact, as soon as you turn this, take this aircraft into a turn, those poxy little wings, they aren't going to retain much energy. Let's just compare this to the F-100 Super Saber, because I want to show you guys, like, look at the difference in the wing profile. Now, the F-100 isn't an amazing turn fighter, but from my experience with both of the aircraft, I can safely say that I feel much more comfortable using my flaps and taking manual control in this aircraft than this one. The T-2 is a projectile, it's a bullet, it kind of plays like the Hawker Hunter used to before the addition of the Rank 6 aircraft. It goes fast, and it goes fast in a straight line. Yes, that's exactly the problem, Smudge. Like everyone, all of our guys in RF2 Sabres and our SEAL-13s, well, we can't hope to catch this thing. Well, firstly, you guys in the F2 Sabres, you are very, you only have to fight this aircraft on event maps currently. Um, thanks to the current matchmaker, the T2 is practically incapable of running into any um, allied teams. It's generally taking into mixed battles against... Well, with, with Japanese, German, and Italian aircraft on both sides. And if you don't believe me, let's have a little look at some battle statistics. So, uh, I just realized this actually isn't going to work, is it? Whoopsie! <laughs> oh, no. But yeah, nearly every single game I have played, in fact, I cannot name a game mode or a battle that I have had in the Mitsubishi T2, Except for the event maps, like the attack on Wake Island. Good God, how the hell did we manage? How the hell did I fuck that one up? <laughs> Where I've actually run into allied teams. The Mitsubishi is currently seeing its own matchmaker. Where it's always fighting other Mitsubishis, and they can rip you to ribbons if you are not extremely careful. But when I'm playing this aircraft, it's not necessarily the Mitsubishi T, the other Mitsubishi T2. Sorry, that I'm worried about. It's any time I have to put this aircraft into a turn. So going back to, where is it? There's a particular battle down here. This one, the attack on Wake Island, um, which is the Japanese versus the Americans. Japanese team compositions on that map look like something like this. You'll have 
five or you'll have six or seven T2s, and the remainder of the squad is made up of these things, these F86, F40s. Now here's the trouble. The T2s bum rush you very, very quickly. They're on you pretty much as soon as you get in the air. And of course, to beat a T2, you need to take evasive action, because as, we as we've already established, this plane cannot turn. Then the F-86 is jumping on you because you're now in a low energy state, and these planes don't mind taking you into a turn fight. They're going to eat you alive. And I think that's where a lot of the misconceptions about this plane being so overpowered are coming from. And also because no one knows how to fight this aircraft, and they don't know how to fight the Japanese in general. So I'm going to show you guys some clips now to explain a few of the flaws and difficulties with this aircraft and maybe shed some light on the facts as to why this plane isn't anywhere near as overpowered as everyone seems to think it is. So I want you guys to pay very close attention to the speedometer in the top left hand corner. I know the quality isn't great as I had to take this directly from Twitch, so it has been well recorded two or twice in effect basically and my video quality isn't amazing over there. So this is on Malta, which is one of the smaller maps in the midst of Bush. He doesn't really have a chance to reach that high speed. Um, and as you can see, we are now breaking the sound barrier. So we're going pretty damn quick. I have, however, just had to fly straight past a bunch of other Mitsubishi T2s. Now watch what happens when I throw the aircraft into a turn. Watch that speed on the Psycho there, apparently. Where is he? There he is. There's been a, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for, if they put a weave skin on this camera pattern, I'll, I'll will equip one, don't worry, I'm, I have been keeping an eye out. So did you see that? We went from about 1200 kilometers per hour to down to about 800 kilometers per hour over the course of that one turn, and I was trying to do that in a manner that would conserve the energy of the aircraft. Now obviously we're putting the nose back down, into, we're putting the plane back into a dive, building up that airspeed again, but here's the thing, this isn't the kind of speed that the other supersonic planes can't reach. Once we get to about this point, now other supersonic is going to have trouble keeping up with us. But that was still a lot of energy to bleed in that turn. Just while I'm faffing around trying to find the right spot to record here, I'm going to delete this in a second. Bear in mind that it was during that turn, that was a lot of time for someone to set up a missile shot. And then, if you have to avoid a missile in this aircraft, which you're going to see in a moment, yeah, that ain't going to go so well. In fact, let's go just skip ahead to that point now. I'm going to go for the missile. Fox 2. It's got evasive. Oh, I hate the fucking... Oh, shit! No, 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 no! No, 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 I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. Go, go, fuck. And that's what 27,000 silver lines looks that's like. Oh, sorry, 28,000, in fact. <laughs> now, what basically happened there Man, was because the aircraft's going so fast, I couldn't throw the plane into a sharp enough turn to break the missile lock because I would have just torn the aircraft to ribbons. Now, I was going pretty fast then, but that is not a speed that an F-100 or a MiG-19 couldn't also reach. Let's just skip ahead to the next gameplay and I'll show you another one of the weaknesses of this aircraft. Let's watch that T2 scoping me right now because it's coming right at me. Let's just get down here. Parachute. Um, well, you can only use it, I don't think so. So, going back to the like speed the aspect of this aircraft, this speed is a blessing and a curse. We are going very, very fast. But that does mean that when an aircraft that can match us in speed, like oh, this T2 who's diving on me now, I bear in mind an F100 and a MiG 19 could do exactly the same thing here. I have very, very limited emotions. And watch how quickly, once again, my speed is dropping as I'm trying to evade these guys. At 800 km per hour, I am vulnerable to no. subsonic aircraft, no. and it keeps going down. No. 700 km per hour, trying to make these evasive maneuvers. T2 burns past me, he gets a few hits into me, and I do not have the energy to pull my pipper over his aircraft to put him That's down. Bad. Whereas at Psych, I probably would have been able to do in the F-100 or the MiG-19. And because of so low energy, easy prey for a missile move. there from it's that every T2. Time I do anything, the T2 is just jump on me. And it's just like, that's another 27,000 silver lines. How the fuck am I supposed to play this plane? Good God. 
does need to be said I'm a very average player and I have I've played quite a few games in the T2 at this point, but I'm still kind of getting to grips with it. It's about here that I actually kind of remember, like, oh yeah, this is how you're supposed to play this aircraft, you need to build up that speed. Because of, so far, I'd actually been side climbing to try and gain my altitude and airspeed to fight the enemy, and it hadn't been working out. So this time around, I decided to push straight into the enemy, charge down their throats and whiz past them, because the enemy team is made up of T2s and MiG-19s which is going to bleed a lot of energy if they have to turn around and chase me. So I figure, screw it, well, let's go blast in and go straight past them. If they want to chase me, I'm going to have more than enough time to open distance and outrun them. And I should also have enough time to gain enough distance to avoid any incoming air-to-air -air missiles. Now, the T-2's air-to-air missiles are not the only arm that this aircraft has. This aircraft is also fitted with a 20mm Gatling gun. Oh yes, <laughs> it's the Vulcan. It's the burp, well, uh, it's the baby burp gun, and it's radar guided, which is pretty formidable, right? Well, not so much. A couple of things with this gun. Firstly, it has a small up time, about half a second before you can start squeezing off rounds. Not only that, it's very difficult to aim when you've got that so that sonic plume of cloud around your aircraft. And because of the speed that we're going, we're not going to have much time to actually identify the target and where he's going before we need to fire the gun. And again, you have to account for that spin-up time, about half a second. This is a lot harder than it seems. But it's a 20mm rotary cannon. It's going to go through him like a hot knife through butter, right? Yeah, watch this. Nice little burst. Hit. This 20mm gun does not do a lot of damage. And I have found that I have to put a good one or two second burst into enemy aircraft to do anything about them. Of course, we have figured out at this point the correct way to play the T2, so put the nose straight up into the air and gain altitude. And I highly recommend that if you're playing the T2 or any of the other jets, this is, um, this is a pretty good way to kick off the match. So once again, flip it around, down to 700 kilometers per hour, very, very vulnerable to any aircraft that uh, saw me make that mistake. He was doing something dumb. That Sabre's doing something very dumb. It's put a missile up his ass. No, nope, better one. This guy. Take, turn that off. I'm going to highly regret coming down here for this guy, but then I see an F-86 trying to get under me. Swallow up the gun. Oh yeah, didn't account for that half a second, and I missed my chance for a second yeah, kill. Or well, the first kill, even. I only made the, yeah, I only made the first kill at this point. Oh boy, and there's a Sonic Plume, and I can't see anything. So... There's the furball behind me. No one's chasing me. No one's really near enough to do any damage to me, right? So, to bring it back up. We're going to spin it around in a second. And you're going to see exactly the point where I realised... No! Right now. MiG-19. See, here's the thing about the T2. It's the fastest of the jets. Oh, it's the fastest plane in the game. But it's not the fastest away, climbing plane in the game. That is the MiG-19, who is on me. And because I just bled so much energy in that turn, I'm down to so much kilometers per hour, I can no longer outrun that MiG-19. And there goes my tail. Ah, <laughs> oh, put a desperate missile out for the CL-13, because I know the end is near. In the end, I just end up forcing the head on with this saber, yes, put a nice yes, on burst into it, flip that wing off, and down I go. And there I am, celebrating, because... Ah... <laughs> Because that was the only kill I managed to get in the aircraft. Now I've got one more game to show you guys, or rather a few clips from another game. Because this is the time, this is the game that I played immediately after that last one. Once I closed the stream down, and it's a much better game. And this is going to show some of the strengths of the aircraft. Because so far I've only really talked about the negatives, but this is going to be what things are going to look like when you're playing the T2 properly. So, we are connecting to the match, we're in our T2, feeling pretty salty, we've had the stuffing kicked out of us, and I'm just going to go skip ahead towards some of the action. So here we are, down to the deck, charging towards the enemy, going to build up that airspeed as much as possible, we've just got off the runway, and once again, I have learned at this point, that really rushing the enemy in the opening stage of the match is the best way to play the T2, I learned that from the last game, except this time, I'm going to be doing a better job to watch out for MiG-19S's. Or just make my teams in general, because they are scary planes when they're coming at you. Now the T2 is an interest is kind of um, an interesting plane to take into a head on. 
Really, my advice is don't do it. But if you have to do it, do it with confidence, because this is a very small profile aircraft that's actually quite difficult to hit. Oh. <laughs> Dad, I just want to take a second to appreciate how beautiful this plane is again. Like, I know I keep saying it, but oh, it's just so wonderful and gorgeous. And any second now, we're going to meet our first contender as we charge forward ahead of our entire team. Do feel the need to stress, well, as you can probably see by looking at team compositions, not a whole lot of T2s in this game. This game is primarily Sabres and a few G91s. And the G91s are pretty scary to fly because some of them have four missiles and they will force you into some turns. Especially when you're at those lower speeds, they can keep up with you. That's kind of terrifying. Here we go, there's an F-86 F-40. I do not recommend doing head-ons, but you have to do it. Nice long burst, boom, he's gone. And that was the first strike, and we keep going. Do not stop to check the sights or confirm the kill. That's a very dead saber. Keep going, open up that throttle, get us out of here. So at this point, I have I have done my Dragdale um, escape from the main from the main group, and I've made sure there's no one following me, and I've given myself plenty of room to come back around and build up the speed. And this is the way the T2 needs to be played. You can, if you are caught at a low energy state, you are going to die. So I'm flying back into the furball here, and I'm searching for targets. Line up the saber, thinking, yeah, you'll you'll do. You're in a pretty good position. You're coming towards me though. Didn't the that wall that time though, and he's gone. <laughs> Uh, I do feel the need to say, because obviously this is Reaper and you can't see, I am trying to get the radar to lock on, but I'm having a few issues with it. It just doesn't want to lock onto my targets. Dead Saber goes past, and there's the enemy T2. Very dangerous aircraft. Thinking about going for him, put the nose down to chase him, realize, nope, he's just going to go straight under me. Not a chance in hell. See the G91? Can't get him. However, there is another T2 in the enemy team with this one, chasing down my Saber. Remember what I said earlier about the T2 and missiles? Once it's travelling that fast, it's very difficult to avoid them. This guy had plenty of time to avoid the missile, but he waited till too late. And there I managed to secure the missile kill. So, double check, no one around me. Get down, get some speed, get out of here. In fact, the other T2 just kind of whizzed past me. He tried to take a shot, but I saw him coming. Dive down, build up enough energy, and because it's a T2, I know I've got enough time to open up the distance and get away from him before he can recover the speed he's lost from that turn. Now I'm going to skip right to the end of this game because what basically happened now is my team just picked the enemy team apart until there was just one saber left alive on the enemy side. To apologise, was the T2 who was still alive, not the enemy saber. Right, but anyway, I see the T, I see the T2's dead, and I'm thinking I'm going to go in for that missile kill, just because you can sometimes get an assist from it, and it's worth the points. But that F40 saber there decides, yeah, no, boom, and that's my wing gone. <sighs> And I was so salty. I'm trying desperately to keep the aircraft in the air, but no, it spins out from under me, and down it goes. The last guy in there, and everything is dead. And some asshole just decided to ram my plane so that I would lose those 28,000 silver lines. I could have actually made a really good profit from this game. I did still end up making about 10,000 lines out of it, but still, that put me 30k down. <laughs> oh man, I was really not very happy about that, let me tell you guys. So guys, that was a very lengthy video talking about some of the weaknesses and some of the strengths of the, t of the Mitsubishi T2. So, with all that said, what do I honestly think of the plane? I know I mentioned earlier I don't think it's as overpowered as people say, and I'm going to stand by that. I will say though, if this aircraft is used correctly, it can be a formidable, oppo formidable opponent. And it is nigh on impossible to fight when it's being backed up by F-86 Sabres. Now, fortunately, if you're playing the Allies team, you don't really have to worry about these things too often. And, well, yes, I don't... Well, no, I don't believe the aircraft is completely overpowered. I do believe that maybe the plane could be ben could benefit from being bumped up to a battle rating of 10.3. If only so that it didn't have to run into those 9.0 F-86s anymore. Because the 9.3 planes can fight you. If you're at court, a low energy state, then, you know, the F-40 Sabre with the missiles and the G-91s can run you down and kill you if you're not being extremely careful with how you play the aircraft. And so I do still firmly stand by the point that no, the plane isn't completely overpowered, especially in the current matchmaker where it's getting matched, where it's getting matched up against itself. And, of course, the other Axis aircrafts, who are, quite frankly, perfectly designed to take this plane on. And the MiG-19, like, oh, 
yeah, you have to watch out for those MiG-19s because they will come up on you. You are not going to escape them in the climb, and that has caught me out a few times playing this aircraft. And, got to be honest, don't really fear other T2s when I'm playing this until they get behind me. But I sure as hell fear those CL-13Bs, those F-40 Sabres, and those MiG-19Ss because they... <laughs> those are mean, mean planes. Anyway, though, guys, that's going to about do it for this extremely long video. It's been a while since we've done something like this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys learned something from it. So just before I go, I'm going to... So let's just reiterate those points before we go. Mitsubishi T2, if you need to fight it, make it turn. Plane does not retain energy whatsoever. If he gets past you and you have missiles, launch one. Even if it's a long shot, you have a good chance of that missile either hitting him or forcing him to make a turn that's going to bleed off some of his energy so one of the faster aircraft on your side, probably another T2, can run him down and kill him for you. The rotary gun, yeah, it can be quite dangerous if he can keep it on you for a second, but use your mobility and stay away from it. Just roll out of the way. Make an adjustment at the last second. Don't push ahead on. This is a low-profile aircraft. Um, it is a fragile aircraft, but it's a very difficult target to hit because, bear in mind, you'll be closing with this guy at about 2,000 kilometers per hour. So, avoid those head-ons, force him into a turn, launch a missile at him if you've got him, and above all else, just keep an eye on the sky because these things are going to be kicking off the rounds at high altitude. Maybe it's even worth, especially you're in a squad, having one of your guys hang back a little bit over your airfield, get some altitude so that he can come in once the T2s start diving into the furball. Because as soon as they start coming out and making those turns, it's going to be a very, very weak plane. And the other thing as well to know with this, it's probably not going to stay at 10.0 forever. And even if it does, you know, this isn't the end of the tech tree. Might be the end of the Japanese tech tree for the while. I mean, they're going to get the F1, which is going to be a very, very similarly performing aircraft with a bit more ordnance. But I think we all know what's going to end up down here, here, and here. Or maybe even down here, here, and here. And I think those aircraft are not going to be anywhere near as afraid of the T2 as everyone is now. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next one.